Hello, doctors. This is Dr. Paola Espinel. I am helping other candidates to prepare for the clinical exam. I have my online summaries, which are like a self-study course, and you can review. Great compilation of resources. I keep doing updates. There is a lot of material. If you want to get all information in one place, it is organized, and I'm also posting a role plays record yes the replay of role plays there's also 22 2022 exams so you're familiar with the topics and yes great material especially communication skills short audios and summary slides if you have any gap in your knowledge so we are doing that i also have online sorry personal sessions private sessions for practice role play communication time management uh, if you want to work on the stress management and the mindset as well. And I also run weekly sessions Tuesdays and Thursdays on the evening. So 8 p.m. Melbourne time. You are welcome to join for 90 minutes session. We usually review four to five cases and the numbers are small. Between two to four doctors, we meet and practice under the time um, limits the cases from recent exams to get familiar with the topics, the tasks. So if you are interested and, and want to join me, you are welcome. Please check here the email below so you can contact me for, for any support. These are my services. I have a quick video because last week that the AMC opened some dates for exams, October and November. Uh, some of the, the people that I have shared my free resources, my audios, or we have become, you know, uh, in contact before or are my students from the course were asking me, what do you pick? Do you recommend the face-to-face? -face? Should I go for online exam? So there's a, that's a thing and a question that I believe all of you ask yourself. And sometimes it's hard to pick. So what can I tell you? I did the exam before COVID, so online was not an option. And AMC has always done the face-to-face. -face. You know, this is this online format is new. So I don't have the online experience, but I will tell you a little bit about what I see are the differences. And also what I have heard from other people. So, of course, I see that online is a great opportunity for doctors who are overseas is still working still have family and alive you know they are still settled down in your own home country or for some uh, reasons yes you are, you are you are not in australia having the online exam is a excellent support and opportunity otherwise you would have to invest in the time the logistics and more money to get the visa to come here and, and travel so that's one thing so in that sense, it's really good for overseas people to do the online exam. What is the difference with the face-to-face? -face? So online exam, there is no contact with examiner. You only see one person in the camera, and that is the patient, a carer, um, relative, or a medical student. That's mostly common. And you only interact with that person. So, uh, People say, so how do I check if my patient is hemodynamically stable or how do I want to check first, you know, vital signs if a kid is with respiratory stress? So you don't have that feedback from the examiner. You don't hear from the examiner if you are running out of time, please move to the next task. Or if you do physical examination, you cannot request the findings from the examiner. That they had to adapt and modify the format in a way that they can still assess those skills in a different way. So uh, having said that, you only talk to one person. However, you can still say statements like, uh, Mary, I understand you, you came because of, of bleeding. I want to assess how much, you know, how much were you did you bleed and, and also how are you feeling now? Are you feeling dizzy? Have you fainted? Um, how weak do you are? Are you getting palpitations? So is your heart weak? Do you feel your heartbeat is 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 fast? Uh, or if you have temperature, are, are you are you with temperature now? Do you think you have fever? 
things like that you will be able to assess or tell the patient look I want to move you in my examination in my treatment room or resuscitation room and I'm going to ask the nurse to take your vitals I want to check your temperature oxygen saturation the, the blood pressure pulse rate and respiratory rate and while we talk I want to make sure that we monitor you and that you are stable look you cannot do that but at least you are telling the examiner or whoever is, is listening because someone is observing you that you are thinking about that. The same with pain management. Are you in pain? How bad is the pain from one to zero? Would you like some painkillers? Okay, I'm going to organize with my nurse to get you some painkillers. Can I check if you have allergies? So it's making the statements and communicating clearly what your intentions are even if you are not in the same room and you don't have that third person to do that for you or you cannot take, you know, the vitals yourself. That's things for the online exam. The same physical examination, you cannot touch, approach patient, have them doing everything that you want, you know, inspect, auscultate, listen, palpate, but you can explain, uh, Margaret, I'm going to first look at your, you know, throat, nose ears i want to to check your chest how you breathe how you span if there's any respiratory signs of distress if you use your accessory muscles just explain in simple terms if there's any crackers or added noises when i hear to your your lungs so in very simple terms you want to do whatever a uh, system you are assessing for the presenting complaint and what what's happening with the patient those are things that are different and, uh, you know, they, they will give you physical examination findings so you can then discuss differentials. So those are two things that are different. Uh, people, Some people say, oh, I cannot build rapport or I cannot communicate the same if I don't have the patient in the room. So they have the preference for face to face. But look, with COVID, everyone now is doing a lot of telehealth. So we need to find somehow that you need to practice and with the study partners, we a lot of people practice or study over the computer. So if you are doing an online exam, just imagine yourself that you are sitting with the person and you know, focus, try to do the, the, the report, the, the eye contact. And imagine if you were having the same conversation in the room, it's not easy, it's not the same, but you want to think in your mind and behave as is as if you were with the patient so once you put that thing in your mind or that you are pretending that you are together you may be able to find that of that challenge overcome that challenge that you cannot connect the same that you cannot listen or pay attention or that you know with our english is not the first language so you may be worried that they cannot understand you but believe that is possible a lot of people is now doing telehealth and a lot of people have done the online exam so it's, it's not that you are the first one trying it. One thing that I, I don't quite understand well is that the online exam takes the full day. So, you know, face to face, there's only there's always a morning session and an afternoon session. Online exams is from, say, eight o'clock to four p.m. So the feedback from my students is that it's very tiring. It's a long day. Um, I believe it's all the logistics checking connection making sure that you know everyone is moving into the next station so time wise and from that stamina and energy point of view i think is very tiring and it's a very long exam however sometimes we cannot choose and we need to go with that a lot of women as well that i know and i am tutoring have little kids babies they cannot go to melbourne uh, they for some reason they cannot always have the choice to to travel even if they're in australia so uh, still i think that the online uh, format benefits a lot of people but those are things to keep in mind face to face in the other side is what the mc has done for many many years you know from your medical um, experience as, as a student all the face-to-face -face and oral exams, having the examiner next to you, listening, hearing, and you being able to, to chat, to do physical examination or to, yes, it's different when you have the, page, the same patient in the room. The time goes by very fast as well because in the eight minutes you need to introduce yourself, they need to check 
your AMC candidate number name so it's always yes the, the time is always not on our side and that doesn't change so my suggestion is whatever format or whatever exam you can book uh, is fine sometimes we can choose sometimes we don't have that the option but for the minute that you know what time of exam you are doing or what format you will be able to prepare different or adjust your strategies to make, make sure you are doing the best to suit that format and to perform and excel in that mode so if you have any particular questions about okay i booked this exam how do i adjust my strategy or how do i prepare i'm happy to to, to have a chat we can have a 15 20 minutes on uh, chat so email me my email is amc summaries all together at yahoo.com i leave it here in this post as well and as i say i have different ways to support you depending on your needs time and yes availability and how much money you can also invest because we know this is all um, a big process and a big journey so i'm here to guide you wherever you are and however you you want i hope this is useful remember those two minutes i believe in the two minutes planning time you will know if you pass or if you fail the extension like i know that the the nerves the pressure is a lot and in the eight minutes you may you know you may not perform as you wish but those two minutes planning time are essential for you to make things in your in your head a plan how long to take what you need to well, you know what tasks you need to complete and also how you can best organize yourself and all your answers the two minutes are crucial you don't have two minutes you have like minute and a half to think and organize because you need to read the stems i hear lately that the, the stems are sometimes are very long and complex you need to read twice and see exactly what information you are getting and what uh, is provided because we study from recent exam topics we have feedback and we thank all the candidates who are doing that sharing but the topic may be familiar, but you don't know the patient. Everyone is a different patient. We all are different individuals and there is no, like the, yeah, sometimes it's the same case, but sometimes it's different. They can twist a little bit. So it's very important that you read and reread those notes and have clear in your head. No writing. People practice a lot when you are doing the, when I'm doing the sessions or when you are doing the, the study with, the, with another people or partner you write things you say okay so the differential has this i want to ask this in history and you write it, things down you are not allowed to write not on the online not on the face to face those two minutes are only thinking and organizing your ideas so you need to have that practice and for that is repetition and repetition and playing with the timer as well so you you are fast and it has to be autopilot so i have a lot of experience helping others and with my my personal style so please reach out if you want any help or you want to have a chat thanks for listening take care bye